Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're talking with Ryan from the Timepiece Attic channel. That's coming up right after this. Ryan, huge thank you for uh, participating in the Hosting the Host series. Well, I know you're on the West right. Coast, so I, I do appreciate you being flexible with, uh, with the time. It's pretty special. But let's start with a uh, wristwatch check. What do you have on? Sure. I have um, kind of my work watch, but I have my GM, my, I think closer, my uh, GMT on today. Nice. So it's kind of the, it's slowly turning into my everyday watch, um, which is, I mean, for me, a good thing, but it's, it's slowly becoming kind of the, just the go-to watch I wear every day. You know, I'm always sort of on this, on this journey to try to find the one watch. Um, so in, in a lot of ways, I think I'm not really a collector per se. Um, more so of a perfectionist, uh, where, where my goal is to try to find one watch that just satisfies me completely for the rest of my life, uh, which is a journey. I mean, which is yeah. why I've, I've owned as many watches as I have, um, and tried out a bunch of different brands and different, different models. So for everyone that, that might not know, Ryan hosts the timepiece addict channel. Obviously there'll be a, a link to that in the video description for you guys to check out, which you should absolutely check out. But I think your first video was only seven months ago. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right. Yeah. So what, what kind of prompted you to decide to start uh, posting, you know, videos and, and I think part of this is, you being a perfectionist, like you mentioned, you know, there's an obvious um, constant increase in the quality and you can tell that you're trying to uh, develop the format, a format that you're happy with. So what, what prompted you to start? Yeah, I appreciate the, the, the positive feedback. So yeah. um, about eight months ago, uh, I was, you know, and, and I, maybe I'm just stupid, but <laughs> I, I always thought YouTube videos and, and, and YouTubers were you know, sort of these very professional lighting rigs, cameras, teleprompters, like the whole thing. And it never occurred to me that could just be a guy with a camera. Uh, and I came across um, the Charles Wallingford channel. I was, I was looking at, for a review of something and he had done a review of it. And I thought to myself, wow, this guy's just a guy with a camera. And, you know, he's just set up a tripod. He's sitting at his desk. He's just talking about whatever he loves, in this case, watches. Um, so that gave me the first inkling of, hey, maybe I could try this. Um, and about a month later, he posted a, a challenge to, to his subscribers to basically create a video of what their favorite watch brand and what they thought, the, I think, the best watch brand out there was. I remember that. So, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know what? This is my chance. So and for all the people that are on the fence about doing it, I mean, just try it because you never know what's going to happen. And, you know. I never thought I would do something like this. Uh, and luckily this, this opportunity presented itself to say, yeah, you know, w worst case, if everybody hates it, I'll just say, Oh, I did it for this challenge. Not because <laughs> I it. So, I, so I did it. And it, it, I don't think it came up particularly well. It was, uh, I, I, the brand I selected was Rolex. Um, you know, I just thought, Oh, maybe I can do this again. Maybe I can review some of the other watches that I have. Uh, so I just, it just started from there and snowballed and snowballed and, um, it is where it is now. You're you're married, I think. If I uh, going by your Facebook. Yep. Um, so yep. what did she give you initially? Any input? Because I know my wife had some initial thoughts when I said, "Oh, hey, I'm going to put out a YouTube video." What was your wife's take on that? Yeah, she was actually very positive. She's very supportive. Um, you know, she knew that I liked watches, uh, and and she's like, "Hey, yeah, you know, just have fun. It's it's free, and you know, I'm not costing us any money to do this." Yeah. Uh, it's it's cheaper than than buying the watches i would say uh, and she was just very supportive she you know she basically said just keep me out of it and i said fine uh, so i managed to keep her out of it i try not to do the videos with her in the house mostly because i'm self conscious about it uh, <laughs> but so i wait till she's you know off at work or, or doing something and then i'll just sneak off and do you know do a video and it's really hard for me to make a video if my wife's like in the room i'm always like don't you need to go to the store or like the boys need lunch? It's just weird because you want to be, you want to be natural in front of the camera, but that's much easier to do like now because I'm talking to you, right? I'm talking to a person, but when you're recording a video, you're trying to be just as one-on-one -on -one with somebody, but 
there's not actually anybody there. I get very subconscious or uh, very self-conscious doing that. When she's sitting there on the couch staring at me like, what? you're being ridiculous you know <laughs> and and it's a topic that she could not possibly care less about right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah you get really self-conscious because yeah you're just literally talking to a camera and and I mess up a lot yeah. uh, you know and I try to find the perfect words and when I say it wrong I'll, I'll redo it again so I you know I'm imagining her sitting there looking at me saying the same line over and over again <laughs> trying to say it correctly yeah, it, it can be very sort of nerve wracking. So yeah, I, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started, I didn't really know too much about the editing. So I thought you had to get it right, you know, like from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, my God, I'm never going to get my first video done. Yeah. Like I can't seem to get all this right the first time. What do you what do you use for a video editing software? Um, I use iMovie. So I used to use Windows Movie Maker uh, and probably around the time of my most recent Panerai video. So like the one with the newer format is when I switched yeah. to iMovie. It wasn't a steep learning curve, but there were a couple of new things I had to figure out and learn again. But um, to your point, the editing process and just the, the like the how to shoot. Um, it, I've, I've learned so much since when I first started doing it where to me, you're right. It was all one take. And if I messed up, delete the video, start it over again <laughs> yeah. from the very beginning. And, you know, some of my earlier videos were 20, 30 minutes. So it would be like, number a number of takes and I, I for some reason I did, it didn't click to me that I could just you know cut a piece off insert a piece there and now I now I do it all the time so yeah yeah no kidding I mean the magic of editing right right what pieces do you have in your collection at the moment so I'm down to three watches um the the GMT Master 2 uh, this is a ceramic model um so it has the 3186 movement I have uh the the Panerai PAM246 uh which is a Roddy Amir model and then the third watch is a, a Hoyer Octavia. Um, oh, nice. A vintage piece from the 70s, which I love. Um, and every other watch I've just sort of sold, gotten rid of since, you know, since then. What's, what's the last piece that you just sold off? Um, oh, good question. I would say, I, th I think it was one of my other Panerais. I had, yeah. I, had a, I had another Roddy Amir that I, that I bought. It was a newer model from 2012. Had the first in-house movement for, for, the, for the Roddy Amir. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. But it just it didn't fit with what I wanted. I wasn't wearing it very often. It was, it was completely polished, so it would scratch relatively easily. Um, so I find I'm, I'm leaning more towards watches that are just, you know, you can bang them up and scratch them up and nothing, you know, nothing, nothing really matters. The, the Panerai that I have right now is, is also polished, so I have to be a little more careful with it. Which is probably why I wear this watch <laughs> most of the time every day. So that Panerai is gorgeous, though. I remember when I when I interviewed KDP and he told me that he had gotten to see it. Yep, yep. I was so jealous. I'm like, oh god. I the second as I'm watching the video, I think I also mentioned that video too. That I'm probably like 40 of your views on hey, that video you. on that video alone. The second I was watching, I opened a new tab and I'm like, Chrono 24. How much is this? Oh yeah, thing? yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can, find oh, them, beautiful. you can find them for around around 10 you know yeah. all day long yeah there's not too many of them out there um so but you can you can definitely find them out there but it's a it's a pretty cool watch you're working towards having kind of one piece that satisfies everything mm -hmm. do you have any are there specific features that you're looking for or are you narrowing it down to a, to a brand that you're hoping will fit what you're looking for yeah, what I've kind of realized uh, through owning, you know, Reversos, uh, through owning sort of more dressy Panerais and other polished watches is that I'm not really a dress watch kind of guy. Um, I definitely lean more towards the sportier watch. So I think it's going to be some kind of sports, uh, some kind of sports watch, most likely steel. Uh, and I mean, that's kind of the, for me, that's the, that's the entry point. That's what I'm mainly looking for. I've been looking at uh, Royal Oaks recently. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, something that goes well with different straps, uh, leather, rubber, bracelets. So as of now, the GMT is like, I'm like 80% in on the GMT being the one watch. Uh, I travel a lot for work. So the, the GMT function is comes in very much in handy all the time. So, I, I you know, at this point, I think a GMT complication is something I would need. Uh, I don't share your love for a date complication. I, yeah. I don't really use it as much. Yeah, sporty steel, maybe something Rolex, maybe 
something not, I'm not married to any particular brand, but I, I, I will say that I'm snobby in the sense that, you know, I like every watch that I like happens to be sort of a higher end, higher end, higher cost piece, but I'm not a snob in the sense that I won't ever judge anybody for the watch that they're wearing or the brand that they're wearing the watch or the brand that they like. So, you know, I'm kind of, I guess let all be half snobby. <laughs> so what is, is it, it in terms of the channel, is it something that you kind of just hope to hang on to uh, or keep producing content until it's not fun anymore or until, you know, you're maybe not a, as passionate about it? Where, what do you kind of, where do you see it going in the future? Yeah. So I'm definitely not one of those like, all right, we're, I'm going to, I'm going to do a video once a week. I'm going to do one twice a week. Um, I, I don't, you know, for me, it's not, um, I don't look at it as a, as a feature job or, or something that I want to quit my job over. Um, it's something that I do for fun. It's something I started doing for fun. And, and actually I found that the editing process is, is really relaxing for me, like cutting pieces out, you know, sort of taking 35 minutes of video and making like a five minute, uh, clip with music and transitions and everything looks really good. And I take a lot of pride and I feel good about doing things like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's like, when I get a new watch or if I have something I want to talk about, I'll, I'll do a video, but it's, yeah, it's not this, uh, it's not a weekly or, 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 you know, any set period of time habit for me. What was, what was the most rewarding, rewarding part? Because I, I don't think I went into it with any preconceived notions on, oh, this is what I'm going to personally get out of creating content. So there were some surprises there, you know, it, specifically in, in the people that I've gotten to me in the relationships I've built in the comments section and through other social media pa platforms. So what, what were you it, it, kind of thinking it would be like when you posted that video and what has it turned into? Sure. So when, whenever you look at a video on YouTube, there's, you know, there's always a, no matter how great the video is, there's a mixture of good comments and there's a mixture of not so good comments. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, so I knew I was going to get not so good comments, but what's been, what's been rewarding for me is seeing a lot of the positive comments like, Oh, this is a great review. Thanks for doing this. Um, and, and personally rewarding for me is just, just completing this task of taking all these jumbles of pictures and, and different pieces of video and stitching them all together. So it looks, so it looks like one, one thing. Um, but definitely the, the positive comments and the relationships has been, has been really great. And just, just talking to people about watches that are as passionate as I am about it is, has been, has been really awesome. Did you ever think there were so many crazy watch people out there? I, I, I really didn't. <laughs> uh, I knew, you know, no, actually you're right. Yeah, no, I didn't know that there were people that were, I mean, some of, some of these guys, some of you guys out there are insane and I love <laughs> you guys for it and it's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I had no idea that there were some super diehard people about specific brands, about, um, you know, just watches in general. And I, you know, I love to see that. That's, that's, that's an awesome thing to see. So, uh, Basel world, do you, do you ever think about, uh, making a trip out to Switzerland? I was talking to my wife the other day and she was like, Hey, are there any watch, you know, watch things you could go to watch events you can go to? And I was like, well, there's something in Switzerland it's every year. She's like, well, let's, let's go next year. Because she likes traveling, and I was in I was in Berlin uh, about a month ago, and uh, I was a short well, it's a short, it's about an hour train ride to uh, to Glasute. Yep. So I I was like, oh, I really want to go. Should I just get on a train? I didn't end up doing it, but it was the same. It was actually the same week as as Basel World, um, which is a short flight from from Germany. So I actually very much considered it, but I, I ended up not doing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I it's 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 definitely something I would I would do in the future, and and. I would definitely go to Basel or anywhere else that'll have me in the, in the, in the, <laughs> that I can get to. Even if you don't plan on purchasing any of them in particular, are there, are there any micro brands that you find uh, exciting either in what they're doing or just some unique pieces design wise? Uh, you know, I'm very class. I, I like very classic, classic watches. I don't, I don't really like watches that tell time in, in different ways. Um, I don't like crazy complications. Uh, I, I, from, as far as independence go, I really love like what FP Jorn is doing and, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously slightly out of the price range for now. Uh, but you know, I, I really, I do like those, those very classic independent, independent brands. Uh, Laurent Ferrier is another one that I think makes, you know, awesome watches speak Marin. So again, those are all very sort of classic styled watches that, you know, between 38 and 40 millimeters leather strap, um, 
you know, manual wind or, or, you know, usually manual wind movements, sometimes automatic. Yeah. And they're just like classic watches. I mean, I like the classic, but then I sometimes like something a little bit outside the box. And I'd like to say I could get down to, to one eventually. I don't think I could get down to one. So your reverso right now is not like, I mean, I know it probably gets most of the wrist time. You don't see yourself saying, you know what, I'll wear this watch every day for the rest of my life. No, because I, it, it does get most of the wrist time. I'd say I probably am wearing it 70% of the time at the moment. And when it comes to that other, you know, God, I'm really bad at math, that other 30% of the time, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to have some other options for that. You know, I, okay. I think, I think for me, the perfect number is is six because i've been thinking about it a lot i'd like to <laughs> i'd like to have i'd like to have i'd like to have six you know and i'd say kind of three top shelf if you will and then maybe another three that are not necessarily not not bad in any way shape or form but you know not necessarily to the same caliber either history or or execution wise okay. but just that i enjoy are solid in their own right um and those might be Ro rotatable what started you uh getting into watches where you noticed okay i like watches different than normal people <laughs> like watches sure. muggles as kdp ross calls them yeah so even when i was a kid like eighth grade um or younger even i always wanted i always wanted a watch so i would want uh, so when i was very young i would have like this like a timex iron man um or like some cheap casio watch it was like 10 bucks but it would be like, oh wow, I love you know this watch is awesome. It can do stop, you know, has a stopwatch on it. It can, it can it has a little light. You can light it up. Um, <laughs> so even even back then, I was like, oh wow, this is pretty cool. When I got into high school, uh, my father handed down a watch that my grandfather owned, which was a um, an Omega Constellation uh, pie pan dial from the '60s. Wow. And and at the time, I didn't know what an automatic watch was, or I didn't know what a mechanical watch was for that matter. So I was like, oh okay, so. And he was telling me about it and I was like, so there's no battery? Like what? I don't like, I don't get it. How does it work? And he goes, oh, you just move around and it, and it, and it winds it. It just that, and that just didn't click to me for some reason. Um, and then the more I held that watch and the more, you know, I'd wind it by hand and I'd be like, wow. Okay. So basically with gears and springs, this at the time, it was probably about 40 years old, this 40 year old watch um, is still running. First of all, it had never been serviced. And oh, wow. it tells it told it told perfect time. It, you know, it never it never skipped a uh, skipped tick. Um, I still have that watch. I don't wear it, so I don't consider it like one of my watches. But uh, it's I mean, it's a very sentimental piece for me too. But it's also really what got me into like, wow, that's like that's crazy. That some guy with probably a little a little uh, uh, you know little magnifying glass looking up all these tiny little pieces, putting them together, and that just kind of boggled my mind. That even now with with you know computer CNCing and, and all like the really um, precision stuff we can do right now. Back then what they did with wax molds and mm -hmm. like hand hammering, you know, little pieces uh, was, was crazy to me, especially when you look at the back of a watch and you see how many pieces are actually in there. Um, and you and you got to realize some guy was like, had to put them together in the right order, Yeah, uh, you know, turning the screws at the right you know amount of pressure. Uh, and then, and then it somehow was able to keep time accurately. That's, that was, that was like mind boggling to me. Uh, and I'd always been into cars and, and, and things like that too. So I, I always liked sort of mechanical things. Yeah. I think it was that, that Omega constellation that really, uh, really got me very much into watches. And, and ever since then I was, I started out like you with, with sort of with the fashion brands and like the things that you can afford. So fossil watches and Kenneth Cole watches, yeah. um, mostly, uh, mostly quartz. Um, and then sort of everything sort of escalated from there. And, and when you get a job and you're young and you don't have a lot of expenses, you're like, okay, I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll whatever I want. So, yeah, yeah, no kidding. Did you watch that video that KDP made about um, if you if you see somebody that has a nice watch on and you kind of get a closer look at it and then you notice it's ticking, you know, oh, yeah. you maybe don't compliment them on that. Have you ever been in a scenario where you wanted to mention you saw somebody with a watch that was not a main? brand which mm -hmm. might allude to the fact that oh maybe they know about watches mm -hmm. and then you notice oh it's a quartz right which i don't have any problem with but, you, but then you're like oh well i'm not gonna say anything 
Uh, I still say, oh, that's a cool looking watch. I mean, I, I you know, yeah, I, I would still, I would still go up to them and say, oh, you know, I, I like how that watch looks. Um, I, it probably the conversation wouldn't go much farther past there because, uh, you know, the the people that sort of wear quartz watches and like that's that's a bad way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> them, <laughs> that, those, those people <laughs> that wear quartz watches. Uh, I feel like they're more about the aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine. I mean, you can be, you can totally be about aesthetics, and that's 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 totally fine. Um, but to me, when you when you see somebody with a mechanical watch, or and and one of those brands that's sort of off the beaten path, that it's not a Rolex, it's not you know Seiko, it's not um, it's it's I don't know, I don't know if AP is like a mainstream brand. I don't know if like if, no, like like know. Nomos. If you saw somebody with Nomos on, yeah, yeah, you know, you'd be like, yeah, oh, but, well, yeah. that's not. I think that, like liking. Something for the aesthetics is okay, but it's a different conversation. Yeah, you're not going to talk to them for an hour about watches. That's right. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now, people that you work with, do mm-hmm. they know? Do, does anybody you work with, number one, know that you're a crazy watch nut, or know that you have a channel? They do not know I have a channel, um, but they know that I have they have, that I have or have had a lot of watches because I I end up wearing you know a lot of different ones to uh, to the office. So. Um, yeah, they all know that I have watches. I, they don't know I have a channel. Uh, I'm I'm slightly embarrassed of them finding out if I, if, you know, just, <laughs> just because it's just. I mean, yeah, it's just awkward in general. But are they um, are they friends of yours on Facebook? I mean, do they never kind of notice some? Well, I so everything I post watch related, I I only post within the like some of the wa- the the watch uh, oh, okay. Facebook groups. So yeah. I don't post anything on my main, like on my main feed of like, check out this watch. Uh, I usually only do it within the the few um, Facebook groups that I belong to. So what we'll, we'll class you as a closet YouTuber? I would say I'm a closet YouTuber. Yeah. It's also, I mean, also there was this point where I had like 30 viewers, which would be like crazy embarrassing to be like, Hey, you know, I, <laughs> I make this channel. I spend an hour making these videos. Oh really? How many people watch it? Like 30. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, and also for me, the content, especially like the early videos. And I, I hope, and I, and I appreciate that you mentioned this. I hope that people see from the very first video I did to the most recent video, that there's some sort of evolution of like, Oh, that got a little better. Okay. That got a little better. Okay. That got a little better, um, to where it is now, because you know, I, I was, I'm somewhat embarrassed about the earlier stuff. I'm leaving it up there. I don't, I don't mind. Um, but a lot of it was just sort of rambling on for about a half hour you know, with a camera just sort of facing a watch, which I, I think that's how a lot of us sort of start um, before we figure out, oh, maybe I can move the camera or maybe I can be in front of it. That was actually, that was actually the biggest struggle for me is, is going from behind the camera to in front of it. Yeah. I can, yeah. It, it took me like eight videos to do that. I know you feel like you're giving something a little more of yourself than you initially thought you would do right because you always hear that whole once it's on the internet it's on there forever yep you know so i was i always kind of thought the same thing you know i review stuff stick with my hands i guess mm-hmm. you know and then when i did the first kind of i guess i don't want to say facial video but i don't know uh, let's rephrase that <laughs> let's not let's not put that in the search tag <laughs> so when i when i did the first i guess show my face in front of the video. camera yeah okay. yeah in front of the camera um it was kind of like oh should i should i post it and yeah. i said well i guess i i walk around all day with my face and everybody sees it you know but you do feel like it's just another another layer of personal that you're that you're getting with people and I, I think i wonder if sometimes people realize how daunting you know that that can be mm-hmm. um and i mean I've, I've been really lucky so i can't i can't really complain at all everybody that i've interacted with has been really great and the people that aren't i'm generally a pretty sarcastic kind of person mm-hmm. so i have no problems you know replying in a witty way right like everybody's not gonna like what I'm saying or doing, and that's your prerogative. I I 100% support you loving it or hating it, and I love the fact that you can voice either one of those. Yep. Yeah. I I, I mean I appreciate I I have a thick skin, so nothing really bothers me, and I do get negative comments, just like most people do. Um, and you, yeah, you just have to push through it and understand that the freedom of speech that you're granted to do videos like this 
it also means other people have free speech to say crappy things about it if they want to. And that's, and I, I totally applaud that. Um, but I do challenge those people too to, Hey, give it a shot one day and, and put yourself out there because it is incredibly difficult. I think the first video I did where I was in front of the camera, I spent, a, I spent, a, I spent a lot of time reshooting a lot of it and editing a lot of it. Um, because I, I, I wanted myself to not look bad in any way, but obviously yeah. that's not possible. <laughs> you had some devil. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I had to, um, yeah, so it just it took a long time for me to like click the publish button on on that particular one. But that's definitely the biggest the biggest struggle for me. Was the biggest struggle for me. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point and Matthew Jacks Matt Matto Jackson I think is like his mm -hmm. uh YouTube name. He made a video uh one time with just an unboxing that he wanted to share with everybody and he's not, you know, somebody that publishes content regularly. And I think he made a reference to that in the video that he made. He's like, I had no idea how difficult this really was until I tried putting this video together, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. yeah. What about family? Do you have siblings that uh, know you have videos, mom? Yeah. So once I started, um, once I felt more comfortable in the editing process and once I started creating videos where I was in front of the camera and it wasn't, uh, so, so my videos went from being like 20 minute sort of droning, 20 to 25 minute droning on videos about watches. Uh, but when I started making shorter videos, like under five minutes, um, you know, five, four minute videos and, and a lot of switching camera action between shots of a watch, back of the watch, myself, um, I felt more comfortable sharing with them. So I've, yeah, I've shared, I've shared some videos with my, uh, with my sister uh, and she, she loves it. She's, you know, she's happy for me that I've been able to do it. and she, I think she appreciates how how tough it could be to put yourself out there like that. I don't want to say my dad's my biggest fan, but he's he's also into watches, uh, so he does watch the channel, and he's he always calls me. Oh, did I post a video? I'm like, Dad, I've told you like a million times. Saturday <laughs> and Wednesday, I posted a video, <laughs> or, just, or just subscribe, and then you can. You can yeah, look. yeah, yeah. So um, you know, and he always leaves a, a comment on there, and it's it's really sweet. And he's kind of really seen the progression and some of the events I've gone to, if they're in Miami, you know, he's always my plus one. Mm -hmm. um, just, are you conscious of the time? Like, do you, my, in my head, I want to definitely keep it under 10 if I can for a review. Yeah. I'm, I'm around five. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. and I, and I don't think, I think that's good if you're planning out kind of the bullets that you want to hit. Yeah. The, also the sort of the walk and talk sort of episodes where you, you know, when you, it switches from you to pictures of the watch to pictures of something else to back to pictures of you, uh, you compress a lot more information into a smaller period. So if, if just a fixed camera on the table with me holding the watch, um, to get the same amount of information across would take, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, but doing this sort of video where, where you're shooting yourself and then you're shooting, and then you're showing B-roll footage of the watch itself somewhere else. Um, one, it's just interesting to look at because you're constantly switching angles. Uh, but it also compresses the time a lot better. So yeah, between five and seven minutes is probably my my sweet spot of where I want to be. Yeah, I think I, I used to kind of just try to remember everything I wanted to say, and then I started making bullet points for myself you, because you write it down now. yeah, yeah, I write it down because I find that when you really just hit hit the key points, it's surprising when you're done editing and you're like, well, damn, that wasn't long at all. Yeah, yeah, and you and there's a lot of dead space when you're editing and you just sniff it out. Yeah, uh, I do try to follow a specific cadence uh, and I do find it helps to write it down for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the other channels out there that, that you enjoy watching that you'd recommend sure. to people? Sure. Other than yours, of course. Um, uh, so I, w I, I would recommend the, uh, the Charles Wallingford channel. I mean, it's, it's again, it's a guy with a video camera and I, I really applaud that, that he's able to do that and put himself out there. Um, and, and I just, I like, I like watching his videos too. Um, uh, who you know, you ask this question to everybody and, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to be prepared and I'm not prepared. Uh, I, I love what, and I'm going to name some of the bigger ones, unfortunately. Um, just because they end up being the ones that I, I probably watch the most. I love Simon Crane. Oh uh, yeah. He's, he's just like, aside from like watches aside, he's just like a funny, like entertaining guy to watch and very charismatic. And, um, you know, you sort of root for him. Uh, you know, with whatever he's doing. So I, I kind of, I, I love watching his videos. Um, and he also has a pretty good 
like they're not going to be more than seven to eight minutes. Yep. Uh, very direct and to the point. Um, and the last one is uh, the, the gentleman's club. So Craig's channel, he doesn't do a lot of videos anymore, but uh, I loved the way he reviewed watches. He was always in depth. He was always relatively unbiased in terms of his opinions. Uh, and again, that was another one where it's just like a guy in a video camera. So I, I love the fact that it's like, Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna set this tripod up. I'm gonna sit in front of it. And I'm just gonna talk to you about this watch. I may hold something up. I may, you know, show a photo of something, but that's, that's it. So, um, yeah, those three, uh, obviously other than the, the huge ones. So it's a, pl it's been a real, real pleasure chatting with you and I really do appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate the positive feedback. Um, and yeah, I love your channel also. It's, it's one of the, uh, inspiring channels for me as I'm, as I'm watching things and like, oh, I get ideas to do other things and do other stuff. So, I mean, I appreciate you having me on. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Thanks. You too. Bye. All right, bye. So I hope you enjoyed that episode of Hosting the Host with Ryan from the Time Peace Attic channel. If you enjoyed that interview, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And please be sure to go ahead and check out his channel and other channels mentioned. Links will be in the video description. He has a great love for watches, which after all is what this is all about. So if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. That's it for this one. So close. Close the door. Two seconds. Shh. Literally, I need two seconds. Okay. That's it for this one. CG, out. That's all I needed. Damn. <laughs>